Well, I love that we are here on Friday the 13th. I always love auspicious days. I mean, I, I can't tell you how happy I am that finally you get to meet my brother here after how long of communicating with one another. And now you're here actually on the land that I caretake. And uh, we brought this awesome gentleman here, Dove. And I, I, I'm just curious because, you know, we're going through such incredible times again. I mean, it's always a, it's always a renewal of the, you know, news headlines. It's just rocking everybody's world. And now this last wave of, uh, of attacks, you know, in, uh, in the Middle East have really, really hurt my heart and hurt my soul because it brings me too much into a 500 year history into our lands here, what we've had to deal with. So I'm just really curious to speak to you as a, as an exiled Jew living all over the planet and uh, trying to bring justice and uh, truth out into the world. And, you know, and of course, Chase, I'm curious because, you know, as an indigenous man to these lands, I would really love to just hear your take right now on what you need people to hear about this very situation. Yeah, I'll try not to talk for too long, but, um... I think it's always important when complicated things like this happen to lay out the fact that there's no such thing as a monolith, right? Like the Israeli government doesn't speak for obviously all Israelis. It doesn't speak for all Jews, but its actions are what matter far more right now than its words. And so it's easy for us who are critical of settler colonialism, who are critical of, of hyper militarism. It's easy for us to just not even think about the nuances, but it's important to start with the fact that Israel is a nation state with the military, with enormous backing from the West, um, both now and, and over the last century or so. Um, but it's not, it's not the spokesperson for the Jewish people. It's not the spokesperson for anti-Zionists. It's the spokesperson for a nation state with its own military, strategic, uh, power-focused interests. And the same is true of, of Palestine. Hamas doesn't speak for all Palestinians. Uh, there are, you know, a great deal of, of Palestinian resistance groups that have been uh, marginalized, both by groups like Hamas and also by the Israeli government, which would rather have a, a violent resistance to deal with than a peaceful resistance to deal with, because peaceful resistance is it's easy to, to win over hearts and minds when you're advocating nonviolence. We, we, we've all were taught that in school, Martin Luther yeah. King, Mandela, Gandhi. Um, and so it's it's currently working in Israel's favor that the Hamas leadership is orchestrating this massively violent campaign that at least last week targeted Israeli civilians at a music festival. But that's just to back up and say that when we speak about these terms, people want things to be simple. Mm -hmm. Things are not simple. But at the same time, we do need to focus on the actions of two entities right now. Yeah. One is the Israeli government, which yeah. has a regime of domination and set siege and blockade over Gaza and occupation over the West right. Bank. We don't see is the daily, you know, settler policies that, that, that run Palestinian life to, you know, a point of abject misery. I've spent almost two years of my life over there over the last 10 years cumulatively, and I had to separate myself from it because I witnessed things being done by Jews in the name of certainly Zionism and Israeli military control, yeah, but also in the name of Judaism. I, I can feel the gravity of the situation and part of it is because these, these humans human lives have been taken violently innocent lives women children people who are at a festival and maybe that was the the point of a group like hamas is to to commit such such a an atrocious act that it shocks the conscience mm -hmm. and you know we we it forces us to take a look at the meaning of colonialism uh, why how did we get to where we're at today and as indigenous people of the north of north of, of the americas of the western hemisphere we are contending with some of the same things and that's why i enjoy having dove as a friend too is because i consider myself to have been inclined to support the palestinian liberation because there's a lot of decolonization a lot of self-determination a lot of liberation that i see is common and, and i've been there and when i was there i felt like this is where i was this is where my grandfather was when the reservation system was imposed on him and his family and our whole nations here in turtle island 
this is what it felt like to have our movements controlled. I've never seen so many checkpoints as mm -hmm. I did in Israel, Palestine. It's hard to talk about the use of violence because at, from Standing Rock, we made a strategic decision mm. to be peaceful and prayerful and to stand in that power. And we were still labeled religiously driven indigenous jihadis. They use the term jihadi. I remember that, yeah. And that, that, that indicates, implicates a, a, a bias an anti-Arab bias in the Western world yeah. that that we're we're seeing, and we want to be truthful about it. You know, we we don't need to take immediate sides. But what mm -hmm. Hamas did goes against our indigenous ethos in warfare. Even even we don't do that. You yeah. don't kill women and children, non-combatants. That is right. taboo. You you do not do that. Yeah. And so what what has happened here? has given the, the radicals on the other side in, in, in the Netanyahu government or in the, the defense minister. You saw this, some, mm -hmm. some of the things this defense minister is saying, calling people animals, you know, they don't, they, they deserve to be treated like animals, giving Gazans less than 24 hours over a million people to try to vacate a small land mass. I mean, and where are they going to go? They're just going to go south in where, Gaza. It's a 25 mile by seven yeah, mile strip. But where are they going to go? They're not going to go to Egypt. Egypt has almost the same sort of barriers against They're letting trapped. them in. So where are they going to go? I mean, really? There's an implied message you're going into the ocean. We've got to humanize each other. Yeah. You know, the Jewish people are not necessarily Zionists or even Israelis. Do we? They deserve a homeland. Of course, Everyone we deserve does. a homeland. Everyone does. Everyone deserves a homeland. Nobody deserves the right to impose structural oppression. But we have to hold people accountable. People who are terrorists, who are conducting themselves like terrorists, whether it's Hamas or Hezbollah or whether it's Netanyahu or the KKK, people right. who are doing that kind of stuff are enemies, foreign and domestic. Mm -hmm. And we have to hold them accountable. And, and that, that speaks to the larger unification of, of yeah. our species. I think part of the accountability Chase is talking about includes an honesty about history. I mean, we live in a day today where people just say what they want. There's, you know, people just make things up, right? Yeah. Social media today. Yeah, yeah. But history is true, right? And, and in this conflict, you see a lot of fake news, right? Mm -hmm. You see things like Palestinian is a fake concept. That, that's been made up. Mm -hmm. You see things that the Holocaust didn't happen. Part of human dignity in this setting is establishing a, a shared history that it, you can't argue with. A shared history, like you right. just said. Right. Shared history is both sides being represented equally so we can rise to a higher level of what that looks like to cohabitate a land together. But, but, but when before the State of Israel was founded, there were major voices who were eventually sidelined. Voices that were saying, if we're going to exist in this place, we need to not just cooperate with our Palestinian Arab neighbors, we need to live with them we need to mm -hmm. love them we need to learn mm -hmm. from them and build a community together it's like let let us humanize one another and realize that we either have lived through it somehow or our ancestors have but let's just call it what it is and it's just a struggle truly for justice and for true liberation of all people right so that innocent women and children are not just being massacred no matter what side of the fence they're on that's yes. just not right. We have the same with the Black Hills. Mm -hmm. It's like a Mecca. Look at all the peoples in and throughout these valleys. Just this land is real powerful here. And the, the, the people who are benefiting from the violence and from the, the, the dialectic or, or the dynamic of people being clashing and warring with each other over time, that's obviously part of our evolutionary challenge. And they're going to try to bury the truth and try to bear it because there's the settler conscience is, is a, is a guilty conscience. Absolutely. Right. And so it, can you imagine if I'm, if I'm the settler and I don't want you to be able to teach your true history because it upsets me mm -hmm. and it upsets what I've taught my children, how to view you. Right. That's what we're doing with this banning books and critical race theory. Right. It's the same, you know, at first it was politically correct. And they, and they, all the old old settler guys didn't like to be politically correct. Now they don't want they don't like wokeness. Like yeah. whatever whatever people are doing to try to liberate themselves from from you know truth. But truth is ultimately it's about the expressing truth. And let's just grow as a human race. Right. Yes, the human species has thinks it as it has evolved, but it but one aspect of that is that it has graduated us from 
a, 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 a P or a, from submitting to dogma. Mm. So like, you know, in different religions, there's a lot. They didn't adapt at all. They just said, hey, we're teaching the same stuff that we wrote 2000 years ago. And this mm. is what you're going to learn. Yeah, and you're going to be a Christian. You're going to be a Jew. You're going to be a Muslim. You're going to be a, a Lakota traditionalist or whatever, a fundamentalist. See, my dad is, it would be considered a fundamentalist. You know, he's a very hard, hard line kind of guy. You yeah. know what I mean? And, but, but I've tried to learn and try to be eclectic and resmopolitan and, and, and try to. I like that word. Resmopolitan. <laughs> good one. That's a good right. one. Resmopolitan. Be, because we're a human family now. That's, That's it. exactly it. I mean, how about indigenous knowledge worldwide? probably has a lot of answers and a lot of solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing now, if only we could have a seat at the table. Right. Yeah, and right. I think people are looking now for purpose again. Yes. And those purpose, the answers are there with all of our ancestors, mm -hmm. wherever they were from, because they all struggle with the same. Right. To hunt, to gather, to farm food, to, to survive, to keep the, the lineage going. Right. So I don't know, I think we're left at a place now. How can we affect change as artists, as activists, you know, as lawyers, you guys are the dopest lawyers I know. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold it against it. I won't hold it against it. Yeah, I don't know. Can you leave us with just a couple of uh, good thoughts of what you want people to really take deep into their core, into their heart and souls about what's happening right now in the world? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. There's so much of this bickering and posting and fighting. Too many people are talking. Too many people are giving their voice on this. And... You know, I'm not saying people aren't entitled to their opinions. But what I'm saying is there's people who have been spending years of their life researching this issue, living through this issue, feeling the pain and suffering of the issue, whether it's their family, themselves, their friends. Then there's people who in the social media movement we have moments we have today know there's clout and social capital that you can get from hopping onto this train. And I think when people uh, take sides on suffering and violence, Maybe they genuinely don't want suffering to exist, but they are also doing that because they realize that they can gain personally from it. That's a huge problem. And hey, to be fair, the U.S. is guilty party number one. I mean, they, you know, they're all over the news media speaking more or less exclusively about Jewish and Israeli suffering and not Palestinian suffering. And that's been the trend for a long time. But do you really think the U.S. really cares about Israelis, Jewish suffering? Of course not. No. They just they know that there's there's money and military strategy to be made there, and they'd rather support the side that can serve their interests and not the side that they don't see as helpful to their interests. So that's where I'll leave it. I mean, you know, we're not going to explain this conflict in yeah. 30 seconds. No, but. that's why I wanted to take it outside of just that particular conflict, but on because on a global scale, Chase and I have talked about this, but indigenous people of this continent know very clearly the ills of settler colonialism on one side and manipulation by Christian European hegemony and domination on the other. And what we have going on in Israel-Palestine are sides that have been screwed over by one of those forces. You have Palestinians being completely ravaged by Israeli settler colonialism, and then you have an Israeli state that without the, the backhand deceitful dealings and honestly anti-Semitic dealings at points of European powers would not be in this position. Um, that said, the Israeli government has autonomy. They have agency to make other decisions. You can't just blame Israeli uh, miscalculations and poor decision making on the decisions of, of European powers 80 years ago. But there is a context here. And I think indigenous people have a truth. And that's why the, the mindsets and worldviews of indigenous people are really important right now. And the world's looking to native people right now in, in this in this context, because I think people understand that. Yeah. Can you give your last thoughts on just that? But again, taking out of a local scope and mm -hmm. bring it into a, 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 a global scope because you know, ultimately like you said it's a we're all of this earth at this point now there you know uh we're in a time when hamas is is calling for a global jihad and you know that's a very serious that's a very serious deal there and we don't um but we have to t we have to analyze how we how we think when I mentioned earlier at Standing Rock being labeled as religiously driven indigenous jihadis, well, mm. there's a lot of implication there that comes from the war on terror. It comes from, mm. you know, my brother, mm. he went to Desert Storm in Desert Shield. He went to war for George or Prescott Bush's sons, George W. and George H. W. and Dick Cheney. Mm. And my good, my good brother, 
he suffered the consequences of those war profiteers. And, and so we, we have to really uh, recognize if, if we're biased. If there's anti-Arabic sentiment here, then we, sh we should recognize that. If there's Jewish people are getting shot in mass shootings in their synagogues in the United States of yeah, America yeah, yeah. because of, of, of MAGA, because of the mm -hmm, radical mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're spilling blood in the United States Capitol. Mm -hmm. Jacob Johns was just shot right here in, in Tewa land, in mm -hmm. Pueblo land, mm -hmm. by one of these, uh, these, these people from the radical fringe, yeah. the radical right, I'll say. And, and so those of us who, who want a different reality, who want a different world, have to strengthen ourselves spiritually and defend the land, defend the waters. Yeah. Because we are facing a corporate fascism that's one thing that's a thread between netanyahu people like trump what's the guy's name in in the Putin. brazil oh bolsonaro yeah. bolsonaro and, and and indigenous peoples are finding themselves thrust to the front line mm -hmm. right. be, because of our our our, our metaphysics our, our mythologies our cosmologies our knowledge systems could connect us right here you know what the West might call animism, we, it, it's, we have to defend it mm -hmm. because yeah, that's who we are. Close it out, Chase. Well, I don't have that. We, want to, we just want to thank you, man. <laughs> and continue to seek your peace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. going to do the same thing. Give you what to do, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh, no, I appreciate you guys coming here.